Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Big Beautiful Badasses. I am your host, Kimberly Pleasia. You already know me from this Fat Girl Life podcast, from the Rope of Hope podcast, now from Big Beautiful Badasses podcast, and you've seen my special bonus episodes this month. I am here today with the lovely Jen Anderson. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. Am I actually showing up or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you look beautiful. Fantastic. Technology is kind of tricky, uh, <laughs> which is ironic because I used to work in techie. Apparently, <laughs> this is the way that I'm turning into my mother is that I'm just completely nonplussed by technology half the time. Yeah, I, we all turn into our mothers. We yes. all do it. And <laughs> such a weird way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, so, I'm so psyched to be here. I, I'm a freelance writer. I do marketing type writing for plus size apparel companies. So I do a lot of writing uh, aimed at plus size women about, you know, what our concerns are with clothing. And it's so different from, you know, what the usual, which is, you know, oh, plus size is a body shape. No, it's not. No. And what's wrong with your clothes? It's the clothes, not you. Um, so that that that's my jam. Okay, awesome. Well, you know, the whole purpose of this podcast is to celebrate plus size men and women. I feel like, you know, especially women, we we know there's a glass ceiling. We're only going to get so far up that corporate ladder as plus size women. It's even harder. So the whole purpose of this podcast, if you are not already aware, people, is to celebrate these plus size bodies because plus size is the norm. Average size in clothing is anywhere between a 14 to an 18. That is the average body size. Average size of clothing made that is hung on a rack is an 8. That is your median size. Finding clothes in a fluffy body like this, it's not easy. And, you know, part of what we're doing is we're celebrating being a badass, not letting those things hold us back. So let's jump right on in. How did you get started wanting to write about plus size clothing? Um, well, around 2008 or so, that's when I discovered health at every size and the fatosphere that was really taking off. Our clothing options were expanding um, until about a year or so before that, I had been working in technology as a systems analyst, working in corporate environments and hating my clothes like you would not believe. And then I start, I made the switch to freelance writing and, you know, finding a niche. If you're going to write for companies, it's something you know about. And fortunately, thanks to the fatosphere, I was really able to let go of diet culture and my unhealthy relationship with my body. And it just, it changed my life. So that's the angle that I'm coming from. When I, I write for a company, blog posts or, or product descriptions, it's always, this is going to work with your shape. This is going to look great. This is going to bring the, the, your, everyone's eyes to your fabulous face. There's no, I don't talk about mitigating your hips and compensating for your stomach and all that nonsense because it's ridiculous. You know, this, this wearing black because it's slimming and, and helps you fit into the background. No, it doesn't. No, it, it really doesn't. doesn't. Yes, and apology clothes. That's the thing, it's, it's apology dressing. And I think a big part of the problem is that a lot of clothing retailers have complete and utter contempt for anyone over a size four. And it's, they don't want our money which is going to have to change, especially after this last year, because with even in the, the upscale fashion industry, seasons are going away, runway shows might be going away, because it's just so wasteful. We don't need new clothes every season, and they need to sell us quality stuff that is good. They are all hurting financially because no one was buying, buying clothes last year, except for, for leisure wear. And... So they're going to have to pivot or die. 
you know, there's petites, there's plus petites, there's maternity, there's tall, there's tall plus. And all these niches are underserved like crazy. Any retailer, any designer who wants to establish themselves needs to at least include them, if not focus on them exclusively. And preferably larger than a 3X. Yes. I am going to put this out there. I am larger than a 3X. Mm -hmm. To go shopping. I live in a city. I live in Colorado Springs. We have plenty of stores. I can get a few things at Walmart. I've bought Terra and Sky Capri pants. I've and I love the Terra and Sky brand mm -hmm. because they they do go up to at least a 4x. So I've bought some of their stuff. And it's been quality, but the majority of stuff that I wear, even this tank top, I got this off Amazon. Mm -hmm. I order on Amazon. I order from, you know, Romans, Catherine's, et cetera. But the majority of my clothes are shipped to me. Now, luckily with the industry I work in, I have been able to branch out and find other brands that are even more size inclusive, but it's still, it, it takes some research. See that, that's the thing that that's something that um, there's a saying that I got out of technology and it does apply to clothing. It's cheap, fast, or quality. You can have two, you can't have all three. So if you've got working on a budget, you want decent clothes because otherwise you're wasting your money. So you need to take the time. And may I, I suggest to people make it a hobby. I subscribe to all the emails, look at the pretty pictures sometimes, just have a look. Do not wait until you absolutely need something. Because if you need something for a specific event, you're, you're either going to have to sacrifice on quality, which is a waste of money, or you're going to pay up, which sometimes mm -hmm. is worth it. You know, a good quality piece, if it lasts a really long time, the cost per wear is very small. If you can afford to put in the upfront investment. But even the really good quality stuff goes on sale. So you need to watch the sales stuff. And yes, they'll sell out your sizes. They'll sell out the bigger sizes, but keep at it. If, if And while you're waiting, maybe you can save up some money and afford to pay slightly more and not have to wait on, on the sales. Because I, I always talk about it in terms of pantyhose or tights. You get these cheap tights for $3 at the drugstore and they last two wearings. So it's $1.50 each. You get the nice ones with spandex in them that you buy online. And they're fifteen dollars, but they last a couple of seasons. So just think of that at a larger scale with your shoes and your clothes. And so often I just hear too expensive. Too expensive for what? You know, I mean, I understand that for most of us, we have been betrayed. We have been lied to. We have been overcharged. We don't tr trust. That that's you know one of the main things I can do for a uh, plus size clothing company is try to establish that trust because. New consumers coming in, they have no reason to trust you. They have no reason to believe you. You say it's high quality and it lasts, act. Especially if I can't see it and put my hands on it. Mm -hmm. If you're in the store, you can touch it. You can look at the seams. But looking at, at pictures online, it's maybe, you know, it's hard to, harder to tell. So you need to get, you know, that, that social currency, that other customers and the reviews. And, and you need to establish trust and you need to find brands that you can trust. Mm-hmm. Because some of them, eh. but also some of them sell, you know, I've got $6 t-shirts I bought that are still good. Yeah. That I still, yeah. So it, it, it's, you know, obviously a hundred dollar t-shirt is much nicer quality, but you know, it, it's, fun, it's fun to mix the good stuff, you know, the good and, and the, the good, the expensive and the less expensive. Well, one of the things that I, I hate about shopping you know, and it, I see it so often when I am shopping from home is you have no clue what it's going to look like on you because they put a picture in a magazine of somebody who is a size 14. And hourglass. And yeah. I am a 5X with a B-shaped stomach. Right. That is not going to lay the same way on me. Right. And I will say there is one brand that I am aware of. Mm -hmm. 
and I say aware of because there may be others mm -hmm. out there that I don't know about mm -hmm. that on their website, they actually have a huge gambit of different models in different shapes and sizes. So you can find somebody who looks like your body type and see how every outfit's going to lay on you. Yes, I think, I think every outfit. I know which one you're talking size. about. I know what you tell her. And it's interesting. I've discussed them with some of my, my other clients and they say well, they must have a ton of investment money. And the founders of that particular company did, company did begin in finance. So yeah, they probably have gone to investors and gotten a ton because to have clothes from a zero or double zero up until an eight X that costs, that is oh, a lot of upfront costs. So no, I think we're talking about two different companies. Ooh. Okay. What company are you talking about? I'm talking about universal standard. I'm talking about smart glamour. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, it's it from a very... double, double S or two, an extra, extra small to a 15 X on the size chart, but every item is customizable and it does not matter which item you purchase mm -hmm. or what size you purchase, it is the same cost. Yes. Whether you get the small or the 15X. Yes, and she makes those to order. Yes, she it's does. Like, so it takes a little bit longer to get it, mm -hmm. but it's worth it. Yes, yeah, with Universal Standard, they have all these sizes on, on stock. Just waiting to order like that, which, yeah, that's a lot of upfront cost. And it is a lot of effort to actually make the clothing that I uh, was Mallory, who does Smart Glamour. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and I love I love her site. I love all the pictures. But I've also had other clients who, you know, they've sent out pictures. They've sent out clothing to influencers and bloggers who don't care about the visible belly line. Which, if you're under the age of 40, you don't care about it. If you're over the age of 40, you were raised to go, oh, my God, no. But, and the thing is, is that the, the people in charge of the company, even if they are plus size, say, yeah, they look fine, but I got to sell clothes. And our customers, especially if they're over a certain age, are they going to look at that, that VBO and think, oh, no, that's going to look good on me? Or you know, are they going to be like, oh, no, it's horrible. So it's it's tricky because it, it have then you have to have the budget to have all all the clothes on stock and all the pictures and mm -hmm. it, it's and a lot of plus size women are very camera shy even if you just had customer photos like um, Kiona love Kiona dresses and their stuff um, they have customer photos but they'll have the same style and just keep bringing it out in different different fabrics or different patterns and colors. So they have it long enough and their customer base is young enough that they will send in pictures of themselves. If it, it's larger women who are told to, you know, oh, hide themselves and, and, and over a certain age, we're not going to get customer photos. And, and, and I have tried, I have asked. It, it's, you know, it's a challenge, you know, and it's some want to, and some are like, well, going over a three X, that's a whole different ball game because I can't do it badly. You know, it, it's like, if you're going to someone who has size zero to three, eight X, they need to have several different patterns rather than just, just scale one, mm -hmm. Doing, you know, zero X to three X that's scaling one pattern. And that, that works somewhat, but going higher than that, you don't know, you need a new pattern so there's that expense and, and especially after this past year you know this the smaller brands so i have sympathy i can name the ones that are that are have larger sizes um but yeah it's the thing if you can find one that has your sizes and has the quality then save up look for the sales stick, yes. with, them. stick with who you can trust because they obviously respect you and want to give you your you know want to take your money and make you well, look good and I love that you kind of honed in on the topic of, you know, being camera shy. Because one thing, I'm I'm on TikTok. I love TikTok. I will lay in bed, de you know, decompressing the brain and watch TikTok for three hours. I get lost in TikTok. I freely admit it. But one of the things that I am noticing on TikTok is more and more and more plus size women and men showing full body, mm -hmm. showing up in video and saying, hey, I'm here, I'm fluffy, 
take it or leave it. And if you don't like it, walk away. Yeah. And I am loving this movement. And I've even start, you know, started seeing it on the Instagram reels and on Clapper. You know, it's becoming more and more of a thing to do this. How, what is your impression on that? I love it. I absolutely love it. I have, I have a friend who's not even a fashion person. Um, we're friends from high school and, and she's a professor and expert on all sorts of very serious matters, but also she has pictures of herself doing yoga on Instagram and showing the roles and it's delightful. You know, it, it's just that it's not even her activism and yet she's doing it. And I, I love it. You know, it's just something that we have to encourage in each other because it's something that we got from our mothers and from society and our mothers got from society. So it's, we're deprogramming ourselves. At least for Generation X, I found that uh, our forties is when we start to deprogram ourselves. Um, I would totally agree with that. I'm in the middle of the forties. Yep. So um, millennials and younger grew up with social media and everyone is like, oh no, no, that's fantastic. Because they had Twitter, they had Facebook. They have all sorts of social media platforms now where People are sharing pictures and taking selfies and be normalizing things and, and just being exposed to a different way of thinking at such a young age. I was in my mid thirties when I finally gave up dieting once and for all. And I see tweets from women in their mid twenties going, oh, I can't believe all the years I wasted dieting and diet culture. I'm like, oh honey, I'm so you happy no you got it in your twenties. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so it, it's, it is something that we have to encourage each other. You know, I was in um, in a salon, Lily's Belize in Brooklyn years and years ago, um, buying a dress. And there was a, an older woman trying on some clothes and just kept going on and on. But I don't know what, what people are going to think about me in this print. People are going to say, oh, I, I never wear a print. People are going to make such a fuss. People, uh, one, people are not paying that much attention to you. And two, you look great. It's fine. And so even as another customer, I was like, oh, no, no, you look fantastic. It's great. They will DM. Her daughter was there. Uh, Lisa was there. We're all just like, okay, this is this is fine. Let's cheer you on. I love the experiences where we go to um, like Redress in Brooklyn. They're now in, in Ohio. Um, these, these resale stores. There's the Plus Bus here in California. Um, and it's just fantastic to have these events and just these communal dressing rooms even, and just trying on stuff and the, the big fat flea, which is a, a yearly um, sale, a resale thing for, um, raises money for some legal fund. Uh, no, it's for diets, some sort of anti-dieting thing. I forget, it's been a few years I've left New York, I miss it, a lot of my wardrobe is from there. And it's like, oh yeah, these pants are, are way too long for me, but they fit and they're cute and $2, I'm taking them. And I've donated a ton of stuff to them. And it's just such a wonderful experience to go into this communal dressing room and everyone's like, how does this look? What's wrong with this? What, why is, is this okay? What do you think? And giving people advice and getting advice and just having this communal experience where we all just, we're fat together. Just going, I went to an event at Plus Bus and I didn't stay that long, didn't socialize that long. But there's so many women just walking around in, um, in bralettes. And you know, when you have the big ones, you know, we want the industrial strength bras and just <laughs> have them in a bralette outside the house. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that so much. I really do. Because they, they are so comfy. And, you know, it, 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 it properly fit bra is also a, a thing a thing of beauty. Yes, but, yes, yes. <laughs> they're walking around with, with you know, wearing the, wearing the girls down. And, you know, ta rainbow tattoos in their stretch marks. And it's just, it's just being near those people. It's like, oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's I, am, I am so loving some of these ideas. Now, I... I have not been brave enough to do the bralette. I am freely going to admit it. I, yeah, no, I don't. I'm afraid it is not going to hold it in. I have not been that brave, but the, I have made a conscious decision because I've been taking myself out of my normal comfort zone anyways. I have always been the person, you know, I'll wear t-shirts and stuff, but they're always very plain or, you know, they have sloths or whatever. I actually bought a shirt and it, I had been wanting it for a, probably a good year, but there's a difference between wanting it and actually buying it. I bought a shirt that says fat bitch. 
<gasps> I love it. I love it. I love it. And I then I bought another one that says, note to self, you're the shit, boo. Nice. Yes. Yeah. At Plus Plus, I got one tank top that says thick AF and one that said in gold, black and gold lettering, I am a masterpiece. Oh, my God. And that's called Plus Bus? Yes. Okay, I'm typing that into the comments. Because I will personally be looking them up online to see if I can shop online with them. Yes, I think I think they do Facebook Live sales, oh. if nothing else. I, yeah. am, I am here for it. Totally yeah. here for it. Yeah. But my, my next goal, and I told my husband this, because I've done, like, the two-piece, like, tankini top where it's, you know, the shirt and the skirt you know, kind of hide the yeah. the junk in the trunk and all that. My goal is to do a bikini. That is my next out of my comfort zone, do it goal. Because he got me to do one. Mm -hmm. We have a Renaissance <laughs> Festival out here. Mm -hmm. And the first year, you know, I dressed up, but it was, no, you know, nothing like some of the other women. We couldn't go last year because of COVID. But the year before we went, I did the full black skirt with a corset. No bra, just the corset. And I mean, like the girls were up to my chin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I looked down, I'm like, dang, you know. <laughs> but I got so many compliments. And it was so far out of my comfort zone. But by the end of the day, I mean, on the way home, that, yeah, that course came off because I was oh, done. Yeah. Oh, of course. But yeah, Renfair mm -hmm. Clothing is a great place to find size inclusive. <clears throat> and um, concert wear, you know, plain black clothing for people who work in a symphony. And, and they need, so looking for concert wear, they're size inclusive. It's all black and all dressy, but that's another, it's, it's we have to look outside. And when you're thinking about like the Renaissance and stuff, even 100, 150 years ago, all clothes was, were made to order. Everything was custom and God help you if your mom was terrible at sewing and you couldn't afford to hire somebody. So you were stuck in very poorly made clothing, but it was made to your size, to your exact measurements. Things looked better. They were more comfortable and there was no, oh, I'm too big for this. There's no such thing. It's being made for you. And I mean, I'll, I'll suggest certain shapes are better for different body, body sizes, different styles, not sizes, body sh shapes. Like I, I'm, I'm pear shaped, and I've, my entire life I've been like, why, why does this fit like this on my hips? Why are my hips like this? No, the real question is, why is this fitting my hips this way? It's because that is not shaped for me. That's straight up and down. That's not for me. That is the the apple shapes mm -hmm. my best friend. That is not my friend. I'm, I need the A line. A line is everyone's best friend, <clears throat> and <clears throat> and it's it's more comfortable. It isn't a matter of I have to do toning exercises or shapewear. It's just working with your shape. So maybe 200 years ago, you would go to the tailor and they would say, oh, no, no, madame, we must have, you know, th this style instead of that. But, eh, you know, maybe, you know, of course, it's obviously where they, I mean, they were also there to hold up the girls. They weren't necessarily just in the waist. The, the, that extreme waist, small, mm -hmm. swallowing um, was not as common as, as we think it is, uh, fortunately. But yeah, so I mean, the, the made, the made to measure clothing, the made to order clothing, the um, uh, just getting things tailored or just learning how to make a few alterations, which is that's on my to-do list is that you can take a $10 t-shirt and make it look fantastic on you. And that's, oh, that is why, you know, the celebrities are wearing the same clothes you are and they're go, you know, going to Starbucks and the paparazzi has been t tipped off um, to get, and they look fantastic. It's because their stylist tailored it to them. And that that's, you know, that that's the secret. We all think, Oh, I don't look good in clothes. No. Clothes aren't made aren't made perfectly for you. They're not custom, and therefore you can you can have them altered, or have them made. Ishakti is another. They have you know a wide range of sizes, and they will do custom. Well, then, and even for altering, for people who don't have the sewing skills, again, TikTok. I've I've learned so much. I actually saw a hack because, and I own a whole bunch of like the little kimono style jackets. Mm -hmm. Just because for my you know, nine to five, we're not allowed to show our shoulders, can't show tattoos. So I wear you know, a little kimono jacket that's lightweight over a tank top. I'm following the rules. I'm not dying from hot flashes. 
But I saw this trick and I actually tried it just to try it to see how it looked where you pull the kimono to the center and put a bangle bracelet behind it and then put a just a hair rubber band mm -hmm. around the bangle bracelet. And to, to, to and, cinch it in the back. Uh-huh. Mm, nice one. Oh, I remember. I've, I've been like picking up so many different hats. I'm actually thinking about making like a downloadable thing of all these different hats, like trying them out and seeing if they actually work. Sure. Yeah. And you know, to provide for you know my followers, just because these are you know this is stuff we all struggle with. Yeah. I remember in the 80s, they, they, for a while they were selling these things. They were like, it's like a piece of elastic with two clamps, like some suspenders clamps on the side. And you would put that on the back of your shirt. And that was mm -hmm. supposed to cinch it in and define the waist. You know, that's yeah. a lot of women's clothes don't have defined waists. Some do. It, it's, you know, and some are meant to, you know, they're tailored like crazy. It, it's maybe trying to make your shape look slightly different than it is. And if it's perfect to your sizes, it'll be comfortable. But if it isn't, then no, no, no. so it, it's we have to experiment. And you know what? Your dry cleaner can make a lot of alterations. I am five two, so I am very used to just going into the dry cleaner and say, "Too long, shorten, please." And I've also done it so much that if they do a bad job, I know I can tell just by looking at it. Yeah, you know if if it's actually sewn properly, and and you know they. Uh, I once took in a pair of pants. They shortened the pants, but not the lining. And it was basted. I'm like, are you sure they're oh. fitting? I was like, yeah, I'm not paying for this. No, no, <laughs> but, no, and, no, no. I mean, I've picked up enough skills. I can do jeans now. Um, I haven't actually taken out my dry, my um, my sewing machine in, in ages, but it just a quick whip stitch. <clears throat> mm -hmm. A quick whip stitch. I thank God that I took home at. You know, it was yeah. a required thing when I was in middle school. They don't require that now. Yeah. But, you know, for women that are our age, a quick whip stitch on the seam, pull it in. Boom. Done. Yes. Yeah, see, that's the thing is that we, we got to a point in feminism where we thought that, you know, because we only respect, we're expected to only do those things, that rejecting them completely will let us focus on other things. But that's just made us as helpless as men. You know, men who don't know how to cook, men who don't know how to sew. Yeah. My husband is not one of those. My husband does all the cooking and all the cleaning. Um, Same. And buys his own clothes. But uh, yeah, he is unusually competent because I just refuse to buy his clothes and that sort of thing. But um, yeah, it, it's we need to be able to cook. We need to be able to feed ourselves, be able to alter our clothing. And yeah, great. If you have a high powered job and you have no time and you can afford to hire a seamstress or a tailor, fabulous. Do that. Also, you're, be a job creator. Love it. Yeah. But to do it yourself is just so easy and convenient. If, if you're on a budget, it, you know, mm -hmm. there are ways to multi-purpose your things mm -hmm. to where it's going to give you the desired look. And still not break the bank. Right. I mean, that's the thing is the desired look. What looks good is if it, anything that looks intentional. You know, in the past year or so, caftans have come back into fashion. And love a caftan. <laughs> but I, I am too short to wear some of them. <laughs> and it is this big, flowing, shapeless thing. I mean, they, they kind of have some shape to them. But that's the thing. They're made to be big and drapey. And it's on purpose. It looks deliberate. It's not this oversized, shapeless apology dress. It's not and a it, it, Yes, exactly. It, it looks deliberate. It looks fantastic. And we don't have to necessarily you know, hide our shape. We don't necessarily have to show our shape. It's just a matter of intention, looking like you meant to look that way. That's the it's important thing. An accessory. It doesn't become the dominant thing. It is to accessorize. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's the thing. Plus size accessories can be hard to come by. I've got I've bought sunglasses from plus size real you know, clothing retailers, and they're still too small for my giant head. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It, it is very tricky. Purses we need to buy 
um, you know, larger proportions and with adjustable um, straps or longer straps. Cause I mean, you know, this, these cross body bags, that's adorable. That's not a cross body bag on me, <laughs> but there are some that have adjustable or we can go on Etsy and order a custom and just get the, the strap longer. Uh, clutches bigger, you know, rather than a teeny tiny clutch, which is good because teeny tiny clutches don't hold your phone and your wallet and the things that you actually need. I do the hobo style. Yeah. That yeah. is my favorite. It just sits right here on my arm. That is my favorite. And God bless my husband. He knows exactly what style to get me. <laughs> Almost every year for our anniversary, he will buy me a new purse. <sighs> That's nice. And he nails it every time. Awesome. Oh, he's so good. It's so good to be known like that. And have someone else do the effort <laughs> is the thing. I love a good structured tote. But I've I've discovered Angel Kiss purses. Mm. Amazon. Excellent. Excellent. But yeah, bracelets. E well, earrings are, are okay. I've got a short neck, so some dangly earrings that I own and wear still are not. They may be a little bit too long. So yeah, I rarely are... wear bracelets. Yes. Just because I've got huge. Yeah. Huge I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. Is it am I supposed to wear and I've I have read so many style guides because that, that's my job. And I don't know if I'm supposed to wear delicate ones or clunky ones. It's just and it's uncomfortable and yeah. So and my problem yeah. is finding because I love a cute delicate bracelet. Mm -hmm. I don't do the clunky thing. I'm I do the girly little rhinestones, and that makes me happy. If it will clasp. Yes. Extenders. Extenders are easy for necklaces, for bracelets, not as much. Again, Etsy, maybe they can make it a little longer. But yeah, get once I got some necklace extenders, that helped because, you know, I was not always this size. I brought, you know, I've got some jewelry that I've got, I've had since the 80s, which is fantastic. But some of it doesn't quite fit. Or like pearl necklaces. Pearl necklaces will not accommodate um, uh, extenders, but you can use a bracelet. If you have a matching pearl bracelet <laughs> and you can make it a thing. Oh yes, yes, I have my grandmother's pearls See? and she was the tiniest little thing. And that that never that never fit me. But adding the bracelet, ta-da. Jen, I'm thinking you and I need to make our own little show <laughs> of like weekly tips and tricks that we have picked up. Just to help women out because yeah. I'm, I'm thinking we're going to talk about this. Absolutely. Because you know, this could be a thing. This, this yes. could be the Kim and Jen show. <laughs> I'm thinking this may be a thing. Let us go forth and accessorize. Exactly. See, I'm, I'm loving this. <laughs> thinking we're going to do this. We're, we'll talk. Awesome. Well, Jen, I've so enjoyed this conversation. I do have one final question for you. Okay. And it has nothing to do with what we've been talking about. As plus size women, I don't know any woman who at a younger age was very ashamed of their body, was ashamed of you know, being plus size. If you could go back and talk to that young, shamed, fearful little girl, what words of advice would you give her? I would tell her it's not going to happen. That it, it's, and for some people that is the most horrible thing that they, they were, they were told that as a child and it was awful, but to be told it's, it's not going to happen. No matter how much you diet, you are not going to be thin enough for your mother's approval. And it, it's, that's just how it is. That's other people's problems. And that would have saved me. I mean, I went on my first diet before I was 10. So it was, you know, yeah, saved me 30 years of beating myself up and putting a lot of energy and time into dieting that I could spend on other things. To just tell that kid, it's this is a sucker's bet. This is an effort that's not going to pay off. Screw everyone else. And just, this is your body. If you need to learn to sew, if you need to get better at shopping, because in the 80s, in the malls, and the, um, oh, God. but, you know, put in some effort. You know, if I had, uh, you know, the lack of options were not um, a restriction for everybody. Some people were able to find options and or I could have made stuff. I could have gone into designing stuff, whatever. But just to make peace that it's not going to change, that all you're going to do is just keep making yourself miserable. 
and making yourself sick. There were times where I had to stop a particular diet because it was making me physically ill. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, and it's just a lot of emotional turmoil. Just, you know, it's not gonna happen. Exercise, exercise to feel good. Exercise because it's good to move your body. But intentional weight loss is a sucker's bet. And if that poor kid could have known that, then probably would have had a much happier life. Um, probably more productive life and um i would have had a lot more fun yeah yeah i think we're all there <laughs> yep well jen thank you so much for being here again i have this conversation has been a delight yes and we definitely need to do this again oh yes we, we are going to be talking um you guys if you have enjoyed this if you are on board with this if you want to, you know, f you know, voice in about this whole, you know, tips and tricks and hacks thing, <laughs> all you got to do is go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. <laughs> Caffeine is how I function, y'all. Caffeine gives me the energy to do everything I do to keep these podcasts going, to bring on wonderful guests like Jen. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash this fat girl life. You guys have a great day. I will be back at 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with an episode of The Rope of Hope. I will see you then.